Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cafe New Canadians, our virtual event series where we bring you information of importance to newcomers in Canada. Cafe New Canadians is uh, brought to you by uh, New Canadians TV. And today's edition is specially brought to you in collaboration with um, Hispanotech and Unstoppable Me. We are glad you could join us. And the topic we're going to be covering today is um, the immigrant's journey to success. And we speak to Hispanotech immigrants. Um, thank you for joining us today. And you can watch uh, New Canadians TV on Omni Television and from our YouTube channel. We also have a website, um, newcanadians.tv and our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash newcanadians. My name is Gertrude Tumusime, and I'm delighted to host um, our guest speakers from the Hispanic community. Maria Sol, who is a mentor, and we have Evelyn Rodriguez, who is the Director of Mentorship Program at uh, Hispanotech, an association for professional um, immigrants from the Hispanic community. And we also have Miguel Abascal, the founder of Unstoppable Me. Mm -hmm. Thank you all three for joining us. And you are welcome to Cafe New Canadians. Thank you, Trudy. Thanks, Trudy, so, for having us. So how do you say in uh, Spanish, uh, when I want to say welcome, what do I say? Bienvenido. Bienvenidos. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, wow, oh, so hard. Bienvenido. <laughs> and thank you everyone for joining. We have people joining us from Nicaragua. We have people joining us from Colombia. We have people attending from Canada. And we are live on um, Zoom and also on our YouTube channel at, at um, New Canadians TV. Um, YouTube and at any time during this uh, webinar you can send in your questions and you're in the Q&A tab on Zoom and if you're watching us on YouTube in the chat box you can type in your questions and our um, panelists will be ready to answer all those questions as we go on in this webinar. Well, 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 how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing with the new normal that is not exactly normal? Good, well, then. <laughs> there are so many opportunities to learn right now, right? Just like right now, we're using like, you know, and uh, technology to connect with all of us. I think those are like amazing opportunities that we have to take advantage of. I know. Yeah, we just kind of have to adapt to the new normal. So today, our topic, Immigrants' Journey to Success. And we are speaking to you, um, mm -hmm. people from immigrants, yourselves from the Hispanic community. We understand that everybody, an immigrant comes from wherever country they come to, rather from, and they come to Canada and they have dreams, they have expectations, but there is the reality on the ground. There is the challenges, there is, you know, how to overcome those challenges. What are the solutions? How is life for people from the Hispanic community when they arrive in Canada and all those things. We're very excited to hear everything from you guys as you're gonna be sharing. But let's start with each one of us and when you came to Canada and what the journey was like for you. I will start with you, Miguel. When okay. did you come to Canada and how was it for you? Wow, um, I'm going to be now 11 years in Canada. So now it's been, it's quite, a, it's quite a, like um, a really nice adventure. You're not uh, a newcomer anymore. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I, I consider myself a newcomer. I'm always learning. It's crazy. Um, yeah, but uh, 11 years ago, uh, I'm from Mexico. I was born in Mexico City. I, I moved uh, to Veracruz uh, when I was uh, doing my university. And I worked for a, a big company there. So, of course, uh, my, my dream was like, I'm going to go to Canada, and if I did it very well in Mexico, I'm going to do it really well in Canada. And uh, what happened is that um, reality it was like, a, I, I had like a, a, um, a huge shock because I thought that I was going to be very successful right from the beginning, but it took me a long time to figure out things. And a long time was how long? Five years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did a lot of survival jobs. I did construction, cleaning, maintenance. I was a general manager in, in my country, Mexico. And when I came here, I was cleaning toilets. I was like just surviving. I was paying rent with my credit card because I was trying to make ends meet. So my confidence level from Mexico City was like very, very high. I was very cocky, very proud. And when my first years in Canada, 
completely like devastated. And that took me a long time to just come back and to learn the things and to learn the new normal as well. Today. I think uh, I learned a lot of things that I, I'm happy to share. Uh, out of those things is that I thought that my strategy that used to work in Mexico, you know, work hard, work strong, like work a lot. It was going to, it was going to work here as well, but look, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit different and um, you really need to learn uh, the new ways. You need to uh, assimilate the new culture. Yeah. Uh, I come from a country where we have one culture, Mexicans mostly, like 95% of the time. And, and here in Canada, we have like 150, 160 cultures at the same time. So just try to navigate that. That's, that's completely, um, that's another challenge that it took me sometimes. But um, uh, I will say that uh, if you ask me this question five years ago, I would be like, not that happy. But today, oh boy, I can tell you a lot of things, all the, all the good things that have happened in, in the last, uh, in the second ten, five years. And I'm super happy. I'm, I'm very proud of the decision I made. I start from scratch. It took me a long time, mostly because of me. Uh, and I can tell you all the mistakes that I did as well. But uh, after that, wow, I'm living my dream today. So I'm very happy. Okay, thank you for sharing. We'll get back to you to tell us a little bit more about those challenges. But for now, Maria, was it the same uh, kind of experience for you? How was yours when you arrived? Absolutely. When I started uh, looking for jobs just um, exactly six years ago, I'll be in, in Canada on July 1st, it'll be six years. Mm. So the first, uh, just like uh, Miguel, the first half of those years were, I don't want to say a struggle, but it is a struggle. It's, um, it's a survival job. It's an adjusting to a culture that is a multicultural country. So it's extremely hard to, to find the right path, especially in um, the job searching uh, aspect. So one of my biggest shocks was uh, that things are done so differently here and um, when I went on interviews or I um, uh, had interviews over the phone, I was always being asked, so do you have Canadian experience? And uh, no, because I've been here for six months. I've been here for three months. And I and don't have a job. That was always the, the main shock. Like, how can they expect me to have a work experience in a country that I have just arrived to? I was a diplomat overseas. I worked for the Ecuadorian embassy in Paris. So just like Miguel, I had a very different um, um, expectation of what things would be here because I was used to different things. You know, my, uh, my lifestyle was totally at this level. And then when you come here, you need to erase that and um, adjust to a totally different reality and start from scratch and accept that you do have to take a different kind of job, not specifically in your field, but uh, just paving the way, as I always say, paving the way for what you want to eventually get to. That's more or less my my experience in the last in the yeah last. you know like everyone's story is uh quite unique but there's those bits that are really like uh, the reality that doesn't change whether you come from uh, africa or from, yeah, yeah from mexico or mm -hmm. wherever you come from yeah and evelyn so how was your experience when you came to canada well i am from lima peru i came here to canada in 2017 and it was for me that when I just arrived, everything was amazing. Even now, like I love this country. It, it, there is so much diversity here. You can find people from different backgrounds. It is amazing. But, and I have already experienced in my country for international companies, uh, a, companies such as Johnson & Johnson, LG. So I felt pretty confident. I, I was saying, you know, when I arrived to Canada, it, was, it would be very easy for me like to find a job. And the challenge for me was that I actually had more experience in business and in finance, but I didn't have experience in human resources. That was my passion. 
right? So it was like, okay, what, what should I do? And each time I saw like the ads, right? You see that, well, they want Canadian experience as Marisol was saying. So I was like, okay, so how can I, gonna, can I get this Canadian experience if I don't have any? So what I did uh, was meanwhile, I was studying for my postgraduate, like half a year before that my program finished, I started networking like crazy. I was going to different coffee shops, many, many trying to meet different people uh, through online or it could be even in person, trying to learn more about their experiences. Uh, I didn't know anyone in HR. So I think that's like here in Canada, everything is about networking. I didn't even know what was coffee shops. So here, when I came here, it was like, what, what's coffee chat? It's just like, you know, send a message to a stranger, meet the person and, you know, made the connection. And I was like, wow, like it's kind of scary at the beginning, but then you kind of like, like it. I, I had, right, right now I love networking. Another thing that I did also to get my first job uh, was to volunteer. So I was, okay, they want Canadian experience. Okay, let's give the Canadian experience by volunteering. So uh, I actually had the opportunity to uh, meet people from Hispanotech which is a nonprofit organization that helps Hispanic professionals develop their careers in Canada. So actually there was a position as a human resources coordinator and for the mentorship program. So that's also how like I tried to enter in the field and try to gain some, Can some Canadian experience and put it in my resume and in my LinkedIn. I think that, I, that actually helped me so much when I was going to interviews and everything and going to different networking events. I know that now it's kind of difficult to, you know, to go to these networking events, but it's still there are so many online where you can reach out to people or even like using LinkedIn. LinkedIn is such an amazing tool where you can actually connect with those people, even from other countries. And I think that now more than ever, people are, are willing to help. You seem to have had a soft landing better than the, <laughs> <laughs> the two other panelists. Um, for, for you, uh, Miguel and Maria, what, we understand Evelyn got a little bit of support from Hispanotech. Evelyn, did you know about Hispanotech before you came to Canada? Um, no, was it, it, I actually went, I remember it was a soft skills event. It was sponsored by Google. So because I met, because of networking, I met a, a person in HR. Then this person told me, you know what, you should join Hispanotech community. And that's when, okay, like I, I was a member of Hispanotech and then that's when I realized of all the initiatives that they have. And I went to the events and at the end of the events, it was the ex-director of the mentorship program that was saying, you know what, we have a relevant volunteering opportunities for HR, for marketing, for finance. So I was like, okay, HR, you know? So I approached to him and I said, I would like to take the position. And then I became so involved in that, that later this year I became the director of the mentorship program that I am very happy of having it. Okay, so for Miguel and Maria, uh, were there any of these resources like Hispanotech or any other association of people from your community, the Hispanic community that you could have used or weren't they there or did you simply not just know about them or were you simply just frustrated and you just didn't want to know? Go ahead, I Miguel. Can, I can start. Um, I think... Um, a couple of things. It took me two or three years to trust the mentorship process. And what I say here is like, uh, for me, it was like an eye opener for believing that people wanted to help me. So it's, it's very interesting how like in my mind before it was like, what are you, like, what are you saying? Like, are there people that they're trying to help me? It's like, so what is in it for them? So I, I, at the beginning I was very, you know, I didn't trust that much mentoring. So I was doing a lot of like trial and error. And additionally of that, uh, when I came here, it's like, no, nah, I'm going to figure out everything on the, on the fly. I didn't do a lot of research. Uh, today, I see a lot of people that they arrive and they, they just uh, get into, into jobs very quickly. And, and the common denominator that I see to, on, on, on all of them, it's that they do a lot of research before they come. And, and they have a lot of already connections on LinkedIn. And they already like start talking with people even before they arrive to Canada. They are starting conversations and mm -hmm. virtual coffee shops and things like that. So all of those are things are, that I didn't do um, back in the day. Today is completely different. So that's why like I can tell you all the mistakes that I did. And uh, yeah. I will say the last one, um, vulnerability. It took me a long time to learn how to be vulnerable and to ask for help. Before it's like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not going to ask for help because if I ask for help, it's like, it's, it's wrong. It's something is wrong with me. Um, but no, after a while, it's like, it's, it's okay to say like, I don't know. It's okay to say, uh, 
for some reason it's not working for me, like what, what I'm doing wrong. And then people start like helping you. And interesting enough, similar to what Maria Sol and Evelyn were mentioning, it's, it takes time to assimilate a new culture, but at the same time, it, uh, you need to be very flexible and nimble to, uh, to adjust and to absorb as much as possible. Yeah. So that took me also a long, uh, some time because I was thinking, oh, here is similar to like Mexico, or this is not mm -hmm. similar to what I was doing in Mexico. So that all of those uh, comparisons took me some time to shake it off. And after a time, the last thing, just to wrap it up, it's confidence. Without confidence, it's really hard to get a job, like a, a proper job. Like once I started re regaining my confidence back, things changed completely. Like I was, I was really good at in interviews. Before I was completely, you know, answering and uh, I'm not sure about myself. And then suddenly like when I was in my interviews, I was like, oh yes, I, I got this. And that changed a lot and connections, mentoring. I can talk about this for hours. So I just, I want to be very brief, but yeah. <laughs> we'll prepare another time to speak like for a whole day. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, please tell us. So how was it for you? Did you know any um, organizations that could help you before you came here? Or did you also just fall in it flat? Like, did you make a mistake like uh, Miguel just shared? Oh, Trudy, I made so many mistakes. I was so afraid to reach out. I was so afraid to start a conversation. I was always thinking, why would a total stranger be interested in helping me or making a connection to somebody that might be um, a key person to find a job or to learn more about a company for me? Because I am a total stranger. It's not going to be there's nothing in it for them. And I think changing that mindset took me longer than it should, really it took me probably two years. In those two years, I was at a survival job. I was uh, not totally happy with the change, but once you start doing those things, when you start building those bridges is where you really begin to understand what Canada is all about. Yeah. Because of uh, that diversity and because it's a multicultural country, that's exactly why people are more prone to extend their hand and said, okay, well, listen, I know somebody who can give you a hand or um, look for a mentoring, uh, a, mentoring, a mentoring program in this institution or start volunteering for the company you want to eventually work for. So there are things that we don't have, let's say impregnated in our mentality, speaking specifically about the Hispanic community, that is not something that is done, but it is uh, proven to work. It is also proven to take time because uh, just like Miguel said, you have to be very strategic. It's not just uh, shooting arrows to see who, you know, who gives you a hand, but knowing what to ask and from whom to ask, it's, it's key. Mm -hmm. Once you learn that, once you know that it is totally okay to sit down at an interview and sell yourself up. And uh, well, if you are asked to, if you, if you know how to do this, very complex thing. If you know 20%, say, yes, I'll do it. I can do it, I'll learn. You know, just making um, that mental switch, saying, yes, I can do it. I'll learn, I'll, uh, I'm your gal. Yeah. So I think that took me longer than a lot of, um, a lot of people who are around me. And that is also why I was so happy to become a mentor within um, Unstoppable Me, just to okay. make sure that I transmit that to incredible professionals that I have had a chance to mentor with way higher profiles than mine. Okay. They were struggling because they didn't know those steps and I didn't want them to, like it was in my case, wait for 18 months to figure that out. Yeah. Okay, we are going to come back to that bit um, a little after, but you know, there is kind of no measure of uh, success. Everybody measures their success a certain way. For some people, it is to land a good job. 
For others, they immigrate here and they want to be self-employed and make it. For others, it's simply, oh, as long as I get a house and a survival job, that is it, you know? So there's no um, measure of success. But I would like to understand, as people who come from, as immigrants from the, for, from the Hispanic community, did you kind of feel like there were certain challenges for everything that you encountered? Did you feel like there were specific ones that were happening to you or you were coming across because you come from the Hispanic community? Let's go, Maria. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> I meant Evelyn. Oh, Sorry. please go, Evelyn. <laughs> yeah. <you. laughs> okay, so well, one, one challenge that I think I faced and maybe other uh, Hispanic immigrants face as well is that here in Canada, they love to go to the point, you know, and to give your answer sometimes to go to the point. And when you go to a networking event, like we Hispanic people, we are like, so sometimes friendly and that's that's nice you know you should be friendly with the, with the person not only like talk about you and talk about you also like you know let them the chance so you can know them as well but i think also you have to have in mind uh, what is the purpose of that conversation what do you know them to know about you right what have you done what experience that you have what are your achievements it shouldn't be totally dry either you know the conversation should be also like what about you you know you're also a person not only a professional but at the same time, no, it shouldn't be a superficial conversation. I, and I think that happens sometimes with us specifically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how was it, Maria? Um, I agree with Evelyn. I think it has to be very strategic. But you have to, one, be prepared. And that's something that... Um, I, let's say Latinos are not extremely good at because I will we'll do it on the fly. Yep. And we are so social. Mm -hmm. We like to make sure that uh, we create that personal connection. Yeah. However, the, the, coffee, um, the coffee meetings here are strictly to make a professional connection. They will be the, the personal touch and there will be a couple of personal questions and it will have to have a nice flow. However, it has to be, there has to be a strategy behind it. You have to know that you are asking for 15 or 20 minutes from somebody who is probably extremely busy. Yeah. Even now, even working from home, you know, you need to be very considerate of everybody's time. Exactly. Uh, and I so think that was a challenge instead of, um, instead of just saying, you know, going extremely, going um, directly to the social and the personal, which also is another one of our cultural traits. Okay. Making yeah. it more professional and making it flowy. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Miguel, um, are there any specific challenges you thought were specific because you were from Mexico? Uh, yeah, I would say a couple. Uh, they were well, many, but uh, I'm going to talk about two. The first one, um, once you're, um, when you arrive, you have big aspirations, expectations, things, like they don't work as, as, as you were thinking. Of course, your confidence goes down, but also uh, mental health becomes an issue. I remember my first six, seven months, I was completely depressed. So mental health sometimes is something that you don't talk about with your family or friends. And uh, coming from a, a, a Mexican background, uh, whenever I, I was talking with my parents, it's like, no, no, everything is okay. Like, you know, uh, I don't want them to feel bad about me. And when I was talking about with my friends that they were very successful in Mexico, lawyers, uh, owners of companies, CEOs, and I was cleaning toilets, it's like, oh, I don't want to talk to them. So you become this process of isolate, isolating yourself so it's very important that, that you have your network to talk about that, especially in the first six months. Mental health is huge. Uh, eventually, you know, you regain really your confidence, everything's good, then you start working. You are going to find that first job. But another thing that I, I discovered from, from Hispanic people, uh, especially, especially for me, is that uh, our strategy sometimes is to work very hard and someday someone will notice and we will get a promotion. But I, I learned that in Canada, you need to ask for things. You need to say things. You need to complain. Back in Mexico, we have a saying that says, uh, the closer you are to the sun, the more you will get burned. So that's one. Another one is that the nail that sticks out is the one that gets hammered. 
So that what what does that mean? It's pretty much shut up, don't question, and just work, right? Here yeah. in Canada, there is a saying that is the squeaky. Um, <laughs> what is the? I have it here. Uh, oh, the squeaky quill gets the grease. So pretty much, you need to you need to talk about it. You need to speak up. You need to say something. You need to question. You need, you need to, to stand uh, up for yourself. Exactly. And I remember, like, uh, I have another friend from Mexico. I remember that he was very upset one day, and I was asking, what happened? He said, like, I didn't get the promotion. He's like, why not? You work so crazy, like, you know, days, nights, everything. So I, I think you should ask your manager why, why he didn't choose you. And you know what the manager told him? He's like, oh, I was not aware you wanted this promotion. He's like, what? <laughs> Working 20 hours a day like crazy, and he was not aware? Learning the hard way, eh? Exactly. So I would say that sometimes we need to be very direct to the point, specific, and also to say things like, I, I do agree, I do not agree, things are good, things are bad. Yeah. Uh, sometimes as Mexican, maybe Latino too, we say we overpromise and we under deliver. Yeah. 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 So that's bad because that talks about your reputation, it talks about a lot of things. So I, again, I have a list of all a lot of things, but I, I will say those two mental health and visibility and talking and speaking up super important yeah okay thank you guys for sharing it's certainly very enlightening but before we take um, questions from our attendees please continue to send in some of those questions they are going to be answering them uh i would like to know so at what point so you have started the journey it's really hectic for evelyn it was a little bit smooth um mm -hmm. you get there so for Miguel and Maria, when do you make the breakthrough and with what? Uh, talk to us, Maria. Um, well, Evelyn, like you said, had a, a softer landing. And um, I learned the hard way to, to say I can't. I can do it by myself. I don't know. I um, I need help, or to realize that the path that I was used to have it work, you know, it just uh, kill it on an interview or um, apply online. It's not just the way that it's uh, more effective here. So try new things learn that you are in a totally different environment and that you need to adapt you need to adjust you need to accept and um, embrace that uh, that opportunity no matter how hard it is because it is hard and yeah. i don't believe that limits to being hispanic or coming from europe or from africa from anywhere. It is, Canada is a very delicate country um, when it comes to job searching. It's, um, it's a culture that I don't believe it repeats itself in anywhere in the world. And it's um, the earlier you look for help, for support, and there's so much support out, out there. Um, Canadian agencies, uh, specific agencies to, um, to minorities, to groups, there, there is a lot. Yeah. So just uh, let yourself be beaten by the curiosity bug and yeah. start, the, start the journey. It's, it's not easy, but yeah. it, is, it is rewarding. It is possible. It can happen. Mm -hmm. to, so it has happened to all of us at different stages. It took me a year and a half to find my survival job, not even my first job, my survival job, when I had no savings left, when my credit card was, <laughs> and, and then I started, you know, and uh, making connections and knowing those, that those connections are important and cultivating those connections. So what exactly happened at the time you broke through? Yeah, I know you have shared a little bit and telling people what they can do. So for you, so you get your first survival job and you work at it for how long before you really learn what you want? 
Um, my first survival job was probably less than six months because I didn't stop looking for my, for my let's say, dream job. I, then I worked for another kind of survival job, but it was, uh, it was already in, on sales. It was already with networking. So it was uh, a little bit better pay. And then I got my, um, my dream job. It was at the World Trade Center in Toronto. It was uh, working with international business. It was um, uh, mentoring small and medium Canadian companies. So that took exactly three and a half years. Mm, well, so it took, a it took a while to get that, to get that job for sure. And I am sure I will get another job within my field that I still like that I you know it's it's a it's a step by step it's the stairs so the important thing is not to give up not to give up on yourself not to give up on the dream not to give up because it's going to be again it's going to be hard you are going to find walls and sometimes the walls are made of flesh and you have to get through those and yes. it's not it's not easy but it is absolutely possible okay let's speak to you miguel is this where you now think about starting um unstoppable me to mentor newcomers or do you first get to a survival rather from the survival jobs to your job then to this how is that yeah, for you uh, that, that, yeah that, that, that's actually a good point i i would say that when, for me things started to change I got at several survival jobs. Uh, I worked at Tim Hortons, construction, clean, all of that. Uh, things started to change when I went to a networking event. And I would say, you should use always your strengths and your the things that you have within you. So I knew that I speak Spanish. Therefore, I'm going to go with, with people that speak Spanish. So I went to um, the Canadian Colombian Professional Association, a networking event, and I met a Colombian. Uh, invite him to my house. I know, inviting the strangers to my house because it was my birthday. We had a great time. And because of that, that Colombian helped me land a survival, an entry job in a bank, TD Bank. And it took me a while, but uh, thanks to that, I met another person through church that speaks Spanish from Peru. He's an amazing guy and helped me land my first professional job. And we're talking about now six years already in Canada. So my first professional job was a junior project manager position. At that time, I was so happy. I was like, wow, I, I finally am starting you know, to, to do it. You were talking about success. For me, success was to prove it to myself. Hang on a little bit. Just hang on. So all these six years, you are doing survival jobs, but you have your professional job in mind. So what are you doing in between that time? Are you taking short courses to keep yourself upbeat, you know, with your, your field? Or what are you doing exactly? Because I'm imagining you learn this job in a bank and you barely kind of remember what to do because you've been off your job for like six years. So how yeah. was it for you? Uh, okay. Within those six years, I took all the classes you can imagine. I spent so much money with certifications. I did like six or seven certifications that at some point I would say that they were not necessary. Uh, I spent probably $20,000 in the school and things like that, that I will recommend uh, to ask people before, you know, signing up to different workshops and classes and postgraduate programs. Mm -hmm. There are some that they are really good. Some that I will say, um, uh, I don't recommend, recommend them that much because of the, the things that you can do. But yeah, I did a lot. I did a lot of volunteering. I did a lot of networking. But um, I will say that for me, the breaking point was that Colombian association that did that networking event. And yeah, for me, the things changed because he believed in me and he helped me and he became my first mentor like after a long, long time. And he helped me to guide me what to say, who to say, uh, what, um, what to do in an interview, all the different, all the process. So a year later, uh, I find my first professional job. So happy with my first junior project manager position. And I, 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 we were, I was talking with uh, two Colombians in another networking event. And they told me, Miguel, in the last 20 minutes, I have learned more than in the last two years in Canada. Would you like to be my mentor? And I was like, wow. I've been in Canada for six years. I'm, I will say like, I'm not that successful because it took me six years 
to land my first professional job, what do I have to offer? Uh, I don't know, but yeah, I, I, I told those two people, I was like, yeah, for sure, happy to help. Those two, a week later became four, a week later became eight. Then we have 20 people showing up at a coffee shop. And then wow. we have like huge number of people. We were talking and talking about, you know, the struggles, the, the mistakes. I, I always talk about my mistakes with the intention for people to say like, oh, I, I guess I, I should not do that. Or, and, and that's when this organization that is called Unstoppable Me started. The okay. reason we choose the name Unstoppable is because if you see what is the common denominator of all the people that immigrate and move and start from scratch, it's because they are just unstoppable. They just continue. They, they just um, go through all the struggle, all the, diff the difficulties, all the barriers, and no matter what, they just go through and, and succeed. Yeah, they so, just want to work towards success, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that the organization now has been there for five years, like thanks to volunteers like Marisol is like just you know, blooming and exploding with numbers and, and people. And um, we do workshops, webinars, uh, mentoring programs, things like that. A lot of information you will find on the on the website. Okay. But, um, I will say um, breaking point will be believing, well, number one, when you are in survival mode, there is no other thing that just to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. But once you stop being in survival mode, and once you go into like, if we compare this to the pyramid of Maslow, once you start getting on, on a little bit on the higher end, wow, things are completely different. So um, that's when you have more time to help, have more time to connect, and have more time to like land that dream job that you're looking for. Okay, um, so uh, we are going to take a few questions from our attendees and uh, we are going to come back after the questions to speak about now the resources, Unstoppable Me and Hispanotech, mm -hmm. and uh, to you, Maria, the mentorship that you're still providing even now to newcomers. And um, so, so uh, for, for the people who are attending this webinar, you will later get uh, all this in your emails. If you signed up, of course, you're going to get this. And of course, uh, Maria, Evelyn and uh, Miguel are going to share some of this. So let's take our first question. And somebody is asking for any recommendations if they want to get a job from their country. Is it possible? I guess he's asking, um, that is Carlos. Carlos is asking um, if any recommendation if they want to get a job from their country. I guess he's asking before maybe he lands into Canada. Right. Yeah, uh, anybody? I, I can start if you want. Yeah. Uh, everything is possible. That's my mindset to start with. The difference is that, for example, I'm from Mexico. Uh, we we are we grow believing that having good connections, good uh, background, good university is just enough in your resume to make it through. Sometimes that is the case. Uh, I will say it, it's possible, but you you need to understand the labor market very well. Research who is who, who is connected with uh, the, the people that is connected. Um, it's very easy to hire somebody that is already in Canada because it's pretty much, this person is already with papers, uh, everything is done, uh, they can start next day. A, a company to go through the process and sponsor you and select you and explaining the government why you are better than a lot of the Canadians that are looking for a job, uh, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's possible. I have, I, I, I've seen it. It's rare, but it's possible. I will say um, research is the most important thing here. Like. Uh, there are many, many things that are the same, but not the same. If that says something, I know it's yeah. very but it's, yeah, it's not the same. Okay. I can also Thank add you. something there. Yes. Uh, I think that right now, uh, because of all this situation, many people are online and they have time as well. So they can take advantage of the time and actually reach out to people through LinkedIn. I think as Miguel says, like there is a research behind that. To know who you are targeting, who you are talking to. And I think you can use, for example, Zoom, you can use uh, other tools that can help you connect with these people. And I, I for example, another person, I, I um, received a message from a guy that was in Colombia and he was like, hey, you know, I, I saw your LinkedIn very interesting. You think, you know, because of this crisis, I could still like, I, su I should stop my job searching. And then I told, her, I told him, you know what, like right now, like the market is difficult, it's not that easy, but what you can do right now is approach to the people that you would like to meet later in the future. And you have this amazing tool, which is LinkedIn, and you can actually share your experience and your achievement. And
and I start doing it working that way. I think it also helps. Okay, um, uh, Evelyn, please continue. Uh, An anonymous attendee is asking, where should organizations like Hispanotech look for newcomer, newcomers to help? Or for example, where did you hang out in the first few months when you arrived? Um, well, I was actually going to different events from Hispanotech. So they do events such as related to technology, related to education. So if you become a member, then you will be able to see the different events we have and also mentorship programs. And also, for example, speed mentoring that actually is going to happen this uh, June 11th. So oh, okay. Uh, uh, and uh, Diego wants to know, how could someone with a tourist visa get a valid Canadian job experience? Or is it mandatory to have a job permit first? And what is the, the process, the best process for applying? Uh, I guess that is so much of, yes, uh, Miguel is, is there to, to answer yeah. that for us. Here in Canada, everything has a, a certification and everything is, you know, very kind of like, I cannot give you advice if I'm not a lawyer. I cannot give you advice if I'm an immigrant certified person because then I, I'm, I'm liable and then you can sue me and all of this, right? Yeah. We come from a country where everybody tries to help everybody and we can give, you know, the advice and my personal experience. So, uh, Long story short, I can say when you have a tourist visa, it, it's illegal to work in Canada because you have you need to have a social insurance number. And, and this is just talking about working. But I've seen people to working without a, 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 perm, a, a permit or a, a temporal or a permanent residency. So again, it's possible. I've seen it. Is it legal or illegal? Uh, you, you will decide that for yourself too. Now, I will say you can always volunteer. I, for example, Daniel from um, also was was uh, living in Mexico, volunteer almost for a year within Unstoppable Me Online, managing social media and all, all, all different things. And um, his process of immigration uh, progressed at that time. And then when, when he arrived to in Canada, he found, he found a job very, very quick. So those are the kind of success stories that I, I'm very happy to say like, wow, it okay. took me five years. And for him, it took him like five, five weeks, five months, doesn't so matter if five months, it's way better than five years, so I'm happy with that kind of result. Um, definitely, we say volunteering is the most important one. Coffee meetings online, uh, getting and depends on the industry. Uh, that's also a little bit different. Uh, people from uh, doctors, architects uh, that are, um, yeah, th that have like professions that are um, registered and certified. Uh, those ones is a little bit more difficult. If you if you are just more in like general administration or other things a little bit more easy, so depending, I would say, um, uh, yeah, leverage leverage LinkedIn like crazy. You you can you can see who is connected with whom, and yeah, I would say that's the easiest way to start. Yeah, thank you, Miguel and uh, Diego. I guess uh, can find more information on uh, Canada.ca uh, immigration, and you can read all about all the programs available for you to immigrate. I mean, and what the the the, the eligibility is. I think it's safer also that way. But that's interesting that actually people can start volunteering online before they actually come to Canada. Yes, yeah, so that way you have the experience, and then when you get a chance to come in, it's easier for you. And um, Nicole Pitts uh, uh, wants some advice from the panelists. Um, Maria, I guess this will come to you that you mentioned, you can't waste people's time when you can, you, 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 you network with them. Uh, what specific tips do you give to any, what specific tips do you have about preparing to network with people in Canada? Maria, that will be your question. Sure. Um, for instance, um, if, uh, let's say on a practical example, you will never have a coffee meeting without researching that person first. Yes. We are all very public. We are all in LinkedIn. We are all on Twitter, Facebook. Um, it is, um, very hard now, nowadays to hide our opinions. So you will have a feel of what that person is all about before your coffee meeting. Yeah. Make, make sure that you have two or three main, main points that you want to talk to this person about. And they all have to be relevant to what, is, um, to what you are searching for eventually. 
if it's your job, if it's uh, the company that you would like to eventually work for, and um, also make sure that you sell yourself up. You tell them who you are, what you can do for the company, for them, in a very conversational, it takes practice. It is really, I would have to say that it is an art to manage and uh, to master, excuse me, okay. a coffee meeting. And um, the best tip, prepare yourself, prepare yourself, prepare yourself. Okay, thank I you can, so much. I can add something else quickly. I think also it's not only important to make the connection, but it's, it's still important to maintain that connection. Follow up. So many people, they, hey, how are you? This is Evelyn. They present themselves and everything. Hello, you know, here's my LinkedIn and everything. And then, like, after that, there is no more connection. So there is, there, it's very important to be a follow-up with that person and a relevant follow-up, right? And to learn more about the experience as well. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we are quickly running out of time, but we're going to use the remaining time very, um, very well to expand more about our I understand all of you are involved in, in mentoring newcomers, either Unstoppable Me, Hispanotech, uh, you're the director of mentorship programs. And Maria Sol is also a newcomer mentor from the time she uh, worked or volunteered with Unstoppable Me. So um, tell us about Hispanotech briefly and your, ment your mentorship programs. Okay, so Hispanotech is a nonprofit organization that helps Hispanic professionals integrate and develop their careers in Canada. So we have already 10 years in Canada trying to help people, trying to help immigrant uh, trained professionals. We aim to the Hispanic community and we have uh, many different programs such as networking events that are being online these days. Uh, we have uh, conferences with the speakers of global corporations with a very interesting topics. We have women in technology uh, initiatives Actually, uh, this uh, group of women in technology, they are doing an speed mentoring event that is going to be this June, uh, June 11th, but registrations are open for mentees who want to be able to network with different mentors from different fields. And also we have the mentorship program, which I am leading this year. Uh, it has been kind of a challenge because we are doing it online, but I'm so happy that we are preparing so much for this. We are really excited. I am excited to invite you all if you would like to participate. Uh, we are working with PwC, uh, Erson Jan, CCPA, ISACA, Javerianos, and GTA, Exatec GTA. So this year we are many organizations that are supporting our program and we are going to try to deliver this online. There will be three, uh, three main presentations and also three different webinars. Very interesting in which we match a mentor that has more experience in Canada with an MT that needs from their experience. Um, okay. We will start on August 13, and you can find the information online. Okay, um, Evelyn, thank you so much. Uh, I hear you talking about tech, 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 tech. Are people who are not in the tech field, are professionals who are not in the tech field welcome at all to join the association and to get mentorship? Yeah, of course, any person. Actually, we have groups of marketing. We divide groups for IT, groups for uh, communications. Do we have different fields? So you are welcome. We are actually started like a te technology based organization, but then like it became so big and we have so many members. Most of them are Hispanic, but also we welcome also other community from different backgrounds. Right. So, so yeah, no, it's not only the technology, but it could be even human resources, communications, uh, marketing, IT and different fields. Yes. Okay. And so we have must attend who says they're an IT professional from Mexico because you just spoke about IT. So they would like to immigrate to Canada, but all the information they could find says that uh, they have to be sponsored by a Canadian company who is willing, who is willing to hire them so that they can get a job, a work permit first. How can they apply for a Canadian job from their country? Um, I guess uh, that will also be we would send them to canada.ca or does anybody have any recommendations? So this IT professional is from Mexico and they want to come to Canada, but information means they want they have to be sponsored by a Canadian company if they have to get a job with a company first who is willing to hire them. So 
so they can get a work permit and be able to come into Canada. So they're wondering if they can uh, actually apply for a job when they're still back home in Mexico. Yeah, uh, I would say there are many ways to immigrate to a country. Uh, that's one way, and that potentially is the fastest way I've seen. Uh, I, my recommendation would be like find a person that went through the same route and that can become your mentor and explain you the steps. That, that, that would be the easiest way. Um, it's quite rare, I would say. I haven't seen it that much, uh, especially because here in Canada, there is a process where um, they, they need to prove to the government that your position cannot be found within the Canadian job market. And, and that takes a time. And yeah, it's, it's quite a little bit more complicated. But it's possible. And I, I would say if you're from Mexico, you have the Exatech organization, you have Hispanotech, Latin Project Management Networks, you have like a ton of resources uh, out there that you can connect with people. Okay, so Miguel, just continue and tell us about Unstoppable Me and the mentorship work you do to help Canadian newcomers uh, find a meaningful employment in Canada. Yeah, that's the key, meaningful employment, because a lot of uh, organizations uh, focus on getting you the first job. Well, most time that first job is uh, it's completely uh, just a survival, an entry level or things like that. But we are focused on meaningful. And, the, and the, for, for us, meaningful means that to the level that you believe that uh, you should be working at. And, and just to start, I would say we welcome everybody. Uh, most of our things are pretty cheap or very or free. Like we don't have like any barriers, uh, especially because Personally, I, when I was paying rent with my credit card and I was like, you know, oh, max out, I said like, uh, yeah, I, I welcome everybody. I'm, I'm not like picky or anything like that. Organiz some organization, a lot of mentorship programs, uh, you need to have uh, your uh, permanent resident number to receive services. With us, you, yeah, pretty much if you, you know, raise your hand, uh, you are welcome. Like there which, is which means you're also welcome come to mentoring people who have not yet come to Canada, but maybe they're planning to come in someday? We have done that too. We have done that too. Um, there is an online mentorship, one-on-one mentorship. My favorite, and the one that I see with a lot of, a lot of uh, results, it's uh, group mentoring. So the, the group mentoring, and just to give you more context, is you have one mentor and then like four or five uh, mentees. And then what is, what is amazing and even uh, yeah, incredible, is that sometimes the mentor even learns more from the mentees than the mentees from the mentor. And sometimes the mentees help each other and then it becomes like this uh, uh, really nice uh, phenomenon on how everybody works. And I've seen people that they were paired up like five years ago and they're still together and connecting and talking and helping each other. Uh, so I will say group mentor my favorite and that's what we do most. Uh, ideal is face-to-face uh, -face because it's easy. Well, right now it's, you know, it's going to be through Zoom or uh, technology. But uh, yeah, we um, group mentoring online, face-to-face. -face. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Maria, I understand you are a mentor yourself. You volunteered with uh, Unstoppable Me at some point, And now you're not linked to any, you know, uh, organization, but are you still mentoring uh, newcomers at all people? Can people reach out to you? Absolutely, and I am still part of Unstoppable Me. Oh yeah, I've been with um, with Liliana and Miguel for three years already. It was uh, one of the best coincidences that I had happened in uh, in my Canada story, I guess. And um, as I said earlier, I have had a opportunity to meet incredible professionals from very very different backgrounds. And being the mentor, I ended up learning more from them. Okay. Okay. And it was like a think tank. We were completing each other's ideas. We, they, they are so eager to, to find a meaningful job because they all had um, survival jobs or they were just coming into Canada. So they had this, um, this eagerness to to advance and uh, you know to make it to make it happen for themselves okay and um, it has been uh, an incredible fulfilling uh, experience for me and i am so very happy to still be part of it okay thank you so much for sharing we will take a few questions from our viewers on youtube and we have uh, roy asking what would you recommend to a person that will arrive in 10 months from now 
research. Anybody? Research? And then mm -hmm. online. Use LinkedIn. Yeah. Yes. Research, Absolutely. network online. Miguel, any tips? Volunteering. Volunteering yeah, online. Right. Or oh, also great. seeing the organizations such as, yes. for example, and Stop and All Me, Hispanotech, those are great. Uh -huh. that you can start researching. Okay. And Tony wants to know that what achievements do you still hope to achieve in Canada? But I guess that is too big for, <laughs> for now. Or maybe you can give us a one liner about any achievements you hope to, because uh, the attendees feel like you have arrived, but have you? Like, is, are there other things you are yet to achieve? I think I would say um, keep on making a difference uh, in someone's life. That's actually something that motivates me so much. Uh, with this mentorship program, we can help so many people. And even Hispanotech, they help so much. And we try to make the difference in someone's life and try to help them over overcome all the challenges that they have. So actually, that's, I think, the motivation that, that I have in mind. Okay, thank you so much. And we have our last questions about somebody who wants to know any recommendations for newcomers that are looking for like to break through into entrepreneurship in Canada, any resources, meeting groups, uh, can any Miguel? Yeah, there, there is a lot. I think uh, Canada is one of the best countries to, to start a new company. I, I love it. It's mm -hmm. super fast. Um, I will say start with universities. Ryerson University has a very big hub. Uh, then move to University of Toronto, the Rodman uh, School of Business. They have a really, really interesting um, program. Uh, as well. Yeah. And um, uh, after that, go to Mars. Mars is also like really good with entrepreneurship and, and webinars and things like that. There are they, so many, so many. Yeah. Well, it's been a very good conversation and I am sad that we kind of have to end it because very, really soon. But for you individuals who are interested to connect with these two uh, organizations, Hispanotech and Unstoppable Me, you can know about uh, more about their work on their websites and uh, uh, that should be on the screens. And we will also share that with you uh, later, maybe more resources in emails. But you have the net, the, the, the the links on our screen and uh, th these two organizations are actually members of TREC's uh, professional immigrant networks uh, okay. that includes other immigrant uh, associations uh, similar to to these ones and the work they do well thank you everyone for joining us again uh, this virtual series is brought to you by Can new canadians uh, a web a tv series we are on omni television like i mentioned earlier but you can find us on our YouTube, rather our um, channels online, on Facebook, on New Canadians, New Canadians on Twitter. We are also um, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, and on Telegram. And uh, we have a web, a, a newsletter that you can subscribe to and get all information on settlement, on immigration, on employment, on education, small businesses, and so much more. And uh, we'll continue to bring you this series, so just keep it here. Check our pages, check our Twitter handle, check our Facebook. Uh, we'll continue to bring you uh, in the next few weeks uh, things to do with, uh, with employment, things to do with uh, survival jobs. You can look out for those topics. And you can help us make this experience better by telling us how we are doing. If you're on Zoom, you're going to stay a little bit and help us answer like a small survey and tell us what you want us to add into this uh, kind of programming, what topics you want us to bring to you newcomers and what else you want to know and thank you very much to our panelists uh, Miguel, Maria and Evelyn it's been a great opportunity to host you and I believe uh, people would want to know more and they'll get in touch with you and thank you everybody for watching have a good evening stay thank safe. you thanks Trudy bye